Did you know that the average person checks their cell phone 96 times a day? And that's once every 10 minutes. And do you find yourself going through your day feeling like that screen time has control over you much more than you have over it? Well, that's what I'm going to be talking about is how this digital age is impacting our kind of quantum human energy field. But before you want to shut this down, because you don't want to hear about how your cell phone's bugging you, I just want to let you know that I, um, have ways that you can work with your energy field to help to kind of set some boundaries against those kind of digital waves, the Wi-Fi and things like that. So I'm going to talk a lot about digital detoxing, but I'm also going to talk about, uh, what, it, what does it look like in the human energy field? And I'm also going to add a little bit. I was curious about social media platforms. Now I think there's like 20 different social media platforms. And I think I'm probably only going to take a look at five of the top ones, but I bet you're curious about even can a social media platform have a different personality and affect you differently. All right. So let me get into my talk. So what, if you're new to my channel, my name is Nancy Rebecca and I'm a retired registered nurse, but I have been working as a psychic healer, uh, studying the human energy field for 30 years now. And, um, so if you're new to my channel, go ahead and click the, uh, like button, subscribe button, uh, because I put out these little mini teaching videos quite often. All right. So I was really curious about, because it, it felt like to me, there's been a big surge in people searching for metaphysical programs, uh, mindfulness meditation. I know for me personally, I've gone from working with, um, my own intuitive development programs where I might have 10 to 20, maybe 30 students, uh, at one time. And now I can have hundreds of students and there's more people who are asking about my programs, uh, that are coming up and when registration opens. And so I was really curious just how much that had increased. So I did a little search to find out that uh, it has been gradually increasing over the last 10 years, people searching for mental health opportunities to, uh, really bring their mental health into balance. But since the global pandemic happened, it's gone up 65%. And so all kinds of what maybe used to be called alternative therapies are being normalized. So. I selected out of there the digital age. And so that's what I'm going to focus on today. So, <clears throat> and it's like, do you feel like you just can't put your phone down at times, even if it's stressing you out? Uh, do you find yourself scrolling mindlessly and next thing you know, an hour has gone by? Um, do you keep telling yourself it's helping you to relax, even though it might actually be kind of jazzing you up a bit. And so let's talk about some potential ways that you can do a digital detox just by maybe trying to cut down on your phone time. But I'm also going to talk about the ways that you can work with the frequency of your energy field to lessen its impact on you in a negative way. All right. Are you with me? Oh, every time I start to talk, my mouth goes dry. Maybe I'm just a little nervous, but it will get better. So <clears throat> in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the best ways that you can unplug, but, and, and kind of go off the grid. But before I do that, I do want to speak to the positive benefits of our digital frequency age and the positive benefits are like anything that you want to learn, anything educational is available to you. Um, any kind of, uh, classes that you want to take are available to you. You get to know about the news or the weather, what, you know, what's happening. Like I recently was talking, uh, I shared a story 
where I was at this cabin and had kind of unplugged and uh, just really enjoying the serenity and the quiet. And I had just had dinner. I had my PJs on. I'd already been there. I think this was day three. And I thought, well, let me just check my phone really quick. And as soon as I turned it on, there was this big warning that there was a cyclone bomb that was going to hit Western Washington. If, and so that helped me to know that this lovely little vacation cabin that I was at, that I needed to head to higher ground immediately. So if I didn't have that digital information, I would not have known that because uh, I was in a very secluded spot. All right. So those can be some positive benefits of technological influences. So some of the main, um, here's some a little stats that I looked up that I found kind of shocking. All right. So the average person spends four hours and 30 minutes every single day on their digital device. That adds up to one full day a week. So if you think you've got a seven day week to get everything done, just, just cut off one of those days. You actually only have six days a week to get things done. And you think you've got 30 days in a month. Well, cut off six of those days because you've only got 24 days in that month to get things done. And then 70 days a year. So when I looked it up, it said, if you give your child a phone and they're 12 years old in their lifetime, they will lose 12 years to their digital device. I'm like, kind of shocked me. All right. So the problem here is that screen time, um, averages and social media usage trends are on the rise. And so we always know that it's about balance, but let's just do some little quickie things. You can look anything up on the internet, but, uh, using apps for accountability. So there's actually apps that you can use on your phone that can notify you when maybe you've set a goal. So that's a number one you want to do. So let's say that you are on your phone five hours a day, then you can set a goal to only be on it four hours a day. And that there are apps that can monitor that and notify you when you've gone over your, your time allotted goals. Um, there are, you can go on a social media fast. So I've seen some people pop on and say, Hey, I'm going to go off, um, you know, Facebook or Instagram or TikTok for a month, uh, just to kind of give myself a break. So you can go on a social media fast, just take a break. It can even be, it doesn't have to be for 30 days. It can be for one day. It can be for two or three days or a week. Um, and then delete the apps temporarily so that you can resist temptation. Um, and also set up some times during the week to meet people face to face where you're going to put your phones away. You're not going to look at your phones. Oh my God. I was walking in the park yesterday and I, I'm going to tell you, I, I work a lot with my digital device, so I understand it and I'm on social media and I'm checking for emails and things like that. I call it my, my little walking office that I carry around with me to let me know and help me remember what I need to do and what I have scheduled. But anyway, I was, I'm walking my dogs in the park yesterday and the park was packed full of people and you'd have three, four or five people walking along and they're just looking down at their phones. They're walking the dog, looking down at their phones. So I thought, Oh, we, Okay. At least I don't even take my phone with me. So that's one point for me. Um, so after the detox period where you, you're going to take a moment to reflect and reassess and say, all right, how did that do? Can I go down to three hours? Can I go down to two hours or do I need to come back up to three hours? So you want to re reflect, reassess after your detox period to reflect on the impact how did it affect your mood, your relationships, your productivity, and then adjust your habits moving forward. I'm going to teach you some energetic tips. Um, and then gradually reintroduce some of those uh, different devices while setting boundaries. For example, limit social media to 15 minutes a day. Use your phone only for specific tasks. Okay. I wrote, I've been writing all this down. So 
And digital detoxing is not about throwing your device away. Well, what I know, I have a grandson and he's a junior in high school, and this is the first year they've implemented, um, you know, when they come into class, they've got to put their cell phone in a box. And I, I was talking to my grandson's teachers and they were like, it has made, it is a night and day difference having their cell phones put away during classes. So again, start with some easy ways to start turning off non-essential notifications. So like, for example, I don't get notified when somebody posts something on Facebook. I don't get notified when something's, you know, on YouTube, which means I'm only going to check those things when I have an opening and opportunity to do it. Move to intermediate steps, scheduling device-free hours of the day. So maybe you will... <clears throat> Yeah, you'll just, you know what that means. You just set times. So I'll turn it off in the evening, have it off in the morning, or maybe I'll have it off midday. And, um, and then describe, uh, sit with how digital detoxing might help improve your mental clarity, reduce anxiety, and foster deep real life connections. So unplugging isn't about losing touch. It's just about reconnecting in ways and being connected in ways throughout your day that is much more in alignment with who you are. All right, let me talk about the human energy field. So I'm, because I'm a nurse and because I'm a clairvoyant, it's like I can look at your energy field. And when I see your aura and your chakras, it can almost look like a grid. It's like your body, who you are personally kind of goes away to the background. And then I can just see the light of your energy field. So I like, for example, once I, um, a woman had come in and I could see her energy field and she, on the side of her head, it was like this, definitely like she'd had a bump on the side of her head, her aura was smashed to the side of her head. And I said, wow, when did you fall? you know, this week and or since the last time I saw you. And she goes, I didn't fall. And I'm like, are you sure? And then she was like, oh my gosh. She said, I was walking down the stairs and I stepped in the grass and it was really wet and it sunk down and my shoes, my heels stuck. And I took a tumble, but it wasn't a hard hit, but I hit my head on the grass. So it will show up in the energy field. That's the point that I'm trying to make. Or if someone has a lot of migraines, it's often that the top of the aura will be open, that, that it's not closed, or the top of the aura may only come to the shoulders. All right, so let's talk about digital devices. So I was doing a pretend reading, like I'm gonna see a really healthy human energy field. And in this healthy energy field, I'm going to hand a cell phone to this healthy human energy field. So as soon as I did that, it looked like there was a little bit of like a dehydration happen. So the aura was still fine, the chakras were still fine, but it was almost like they were drying out a little bit from the electrical sparks coming off the phone, not sparks, but electrical influence. It wasn't a lot of dehydration, but a little bit. So what would this tell you or tell me if I'm checking my phone four hours a day, I might really need to make sure I increase my water intake. So see, you can counterbalance the issue by taking care of your human energy field. So you wanna make sure you drink more water just by holding a phone and talking to someone, you're never even looking at the phone, but you're just holding the phone and the elect, the, the Wi-Fi electrical that comes up is going to kind of dry out your field a little bit around the edges. Okay. So then I said, all right, so you've got a normal human healthy energy field. They're going to check that, uh, 25% out of the day. So let's say, all right, let's just say average four hours. You're only going to be the type of person that checks your cell phone messages, emails, uh, the daily news, politics, social media, whatever, one hour a day, just one hour a day. 
And what I saw was like more of a dehydration in, that was impacting the body. And it was like coming up from the feet to the ankles. And then I could see the top of the aura, which is usually one to two feet above your head, was um, maybe coming down to about the top of your head. Now, your spiritual chakra is located above the crown of your head where that higher source of light is that is you. And so once I saw that, the auric field, it, it, it came up to the feet, the ankles, and then down on the head. So that's 25%. And so I'll just talk about solutions after this. And then of course, 50%, it went down to here and then up to the knees. And then 75% was down to here, up to the hips. And then a hundred percent of the day, just watching the human energy, oh, not the human energy field, your digital device. <laughs> it was like, it was like this gray, all of it was gray, like this gray energy and the color of your light was completely pushed outside of your body. So 25% gray, gray, 50% gray, gray, 75% gray, gray, and then all gray. So your spirit and life, spiritual life and light is still there, but it can, it's no longer, it's almost like all the digital data bits are now in, um, consuming your body, your chakras, your energy field, and your, the light of your soul is outside of your aura. Okay. So what can you personally do about this and still check your phone average four hours a day? I'm just going to say average. So there's a particular meditation that I teach. I, it's free on my website. You go to intuitivemind.org. You click on stuff, I think is the button or purchases the button. Once you click on that, it says free. And then I've got several free meditations there. So what you would want to do is you want to run your energy and you want it with the intention, you're going to clear digital energy out of your aura. All right. So you're going to ground and you're just going to drain digital energy out of your aura, down your grounding. You're going to bring up earth energy, the lower part of your body. You're going to rinse out digital energy, and then you're going to reconnect with the soul of your light of your soul, your spirit. And you're just going to wash out more of the digital energy. And then the next day you start all over again. <laughs> now, so in this way, what I'm trying to teach you is we are raising in frequency. We are expanding in our tech world and our digital world. Um, how we get our information is really on the rise. And so it, it's going, it might be unreasonable to think that we could cut out our digital contact completely. But I do want to let you know, it's like me, I just run my energy every day. But now that I've seen that, I'm going to be very intentional to drain digital energy down my grounding. All right. So let me just talk about social media for a nanosecond here. So when you are thinking about somebody you have a crush on, part of your essence goes to that crush and it's like, oh, I wish I could see them, or I wish we could go out on a date, or do they even know I exist? You know, so you've got that going on. Or if somebody has a crush on you, their energy is going to come over into your aura and you're just going to aura meld, you know, and all that delicious, crushy, lovey, dovey stuff. All right. Now, if you are on a, in a social media then what can ha you're really curious about something, or let's say you're reading somebody's post and it's like your friend, uh, James just wrote something about his family and maybe they all got the really bad cold and, um, it's really impacted their family. And he's saying, so be careful out there folks, you know, 
your heart, your essence is going to travel along to James and James's family. You've heard the term, my heart goes out to them. You're literally, your energy is draining out of your energy field and it's going towards this other person. All right. I can make a whole video about that, but you kind of get the point. So while you're looking at social media, what you want to do, and it takes, it takes finesse and it takes practice is you want to pull your energy back. You want to think about James and his family and you feel bad that they're sick, but you're going to be very conscientious that you're not sending your energy across the airways. So you could be sending energy everywhere. And I think I've actually got a video. I'm going to have to see if I can find it and include it here where I do a little meditation to pull your energy back. All right. So when you're on a, uh, you're just scrolling, you're doing the reels, you're doing the shorts, you're doing the TikToks, the Instagrams, the YouTubes, the WhatsApp, the WeChat, the TikTok, the Facebook, X, formerly known as Twitter, you can lose a lot of your own brilliance by it going out into the ethers, into the internet, the world wide web and Wi-Fi. So at the end of the day, just make sure you just do a little wash. You're just going to bring it all back. You're going to call it all back to you. And if you've collected anybody else's energy, you're just going to flush that down your grounding. Now I make it sound super simple, but I, I have, I have programs that I teach. If you really want to get into some longevity, uh, learning that will take you a little bit deeper, but let's look at Facebook. I'm like, I can feel Facebook's like, see, I look at all these as a personality. All right. So Facebook. So, and I haven't looked at it before. Okay. So a normal human, healthy energy field and Facebook. All right. So the first thing that I see about Facebook, it's not a very grounded program. It's it's very kind of high level frequency digital. It does really cloud this kind of new creative process. I could see a lot of cloudiness above in your spiritual chakra that, so you may get creative ideas, technological ideas, spiritual ideas, work ideas, clothing, nail ideas, but it, it clouds your ability to have an original thought. And so what do you do at the end of the day or beginning of the day or throughout the day, you want to ground yourself, you want to run your energy and you want to release any of Facebook's influence over your ability. Not influence. What's the name? Interference with your ability to have an original thought. All right. So let's look at, uh, I'm going to let that go. And now I'm going to look at X Twitter. So, uh, let's look at, uh, Ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on there. Okay. So it's kind of fascinating when I'm psychically looking at X at, at, at formerly known as Twitter. <clears throat> at first, what I saw was it, it's like, I'm, I kind of look at it like a human energy field, how it impacts your human energy field. And it was like this black band, you know, have you ever colored in a coloring book? And then you take the black line and you outline the whole thing you've just colored. That's what it looks like to the human energy field. And, um, I'm like, wow, that's a lot. I view that as limited thought patterns. So it's limiting your ability to think outside the box. But I wanted to run some healing energy to see how easily it could dissolve. And it dissolves fairly easily. And then there was this expansive creativity, expansive thought, you know, thinking outside the box, almost like totally, totally opposite of what I was seeing. So it looked 
like it has this potential to expand your mind. And then boom, it seemed like there was this limitation again, and then this expansion and limitation. I'm not quite sure what to, how to describe that without kind of some deeper, deeper readings on it. But just pay attention and see when you're, if you're on Twitter or X, um, what you notice. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and let that one go. Now let's just take a look at Instagram. Well, in Instagram, there's a lot of color. It's, it's not a form of a rainbow of colors, which I think a rainbow is kind of structured, right? It's, it's got red, yellow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, purple. And it's always like that, but this looks like a patchwork quilt of colors. So there seems to be in Instagram, a tremendous amount of creativity of an emotion. Like my sense that there's just, it's just full of emotion, but it doesn't, it doesn't look like it's negative emotion. It just, I don't know anything about Instagram. I mean, it definitely could benefit from a little more groundedness in that, but, but there seems to be movement and Instagram seems to inspire, uh, some movement and, um, just grounding it off is my only thing to say about that, uh, because it actually doesn't look too bad. Okay. Let's go ahead and let go of that and how it influences your energy field. All right. The next one is YouTube. Okay. So what I'm doing is it's like, all right, you're, you're normal, organic, healthy human energy field, and you're watching YouTube. It looks like I can see like the top of your aura is split in different segments. So when I am kind of tuned in to get some more information about that, it's, it's more about community. It's like you're you're connecting with the videos. You're connecting with the people that are making the videos. You're connecting with people who are commenting on the videos. Uh, you may go to a different channel, a different, you know, part of YouTube, but there seems to be this kind of community minded way that seems to influence you. Now, what I do know about YouTube yeah, it is, it is kind of like that community building. And so what happens is overall, you can maybe feel a little bit scattered if you need to focus. So again, what do you do? You just run your energy through your field and say, Hey, if there's any residual from YouTube, I'm going to flush it down my grounding or Instagram or X or Facebook. Um, and I am then just gonna, uh, but it had a lot of color and I have to say, it's got a lot of grounding to it. It seems like when you're watching, you might not have a lot of grounding, but it looks like it can actually help you to ground a little stronger in your community mindedness. And that's where we're going right in the world. So I'm just going to talk about one more. So let me just, ooh, TikTok. Let's just talk about TikTok. I, I don't know about TikTok either. Hmm. All right. So energetically, what do I see about how TikTok influences the organic, normal, human, healthy energy field? And right away I saw it, it was kind of thick. It was kind of congested. And then spirit showed me a set of Chester drawers. So it was dark. It had a, like a white fog around it. It was like these kind of black cube type segments that I spirit interpreted as a Chester drawers. And when you open the drawers, there's colorful underwear and socks. There's colorful shirts, colorful shorts, pants, colorful pajamas, like each drawer that opened up, it was very, very colorful. But what I was being shown by the energy field of humans and TikTok is it's like TikTok. Well, okay. I'm going to open 
the t-shirt drawer and I'm going to show you the t-shirts, but I'm not going to show you any other part of myself. So it's about, um, I'm trying to think of the word when you, I can't think of the word and I know you guys could dip compartmentalize. Oh my God, there it goes. Where on TikTok, it looks like people on TikTok may compartmentalize. They'll show you a part that, um, that they want to accentuate. They want you to see, but they don't show you the full part. And so what it's just saying is when you're watching it, it's almost like you're watching a fragmented video experience. And so what, what does that do to you? It can cause you to feel a little bit fragmented. So what do you do to solve it? Well, you just increase the strength of your grounding and you say, Hey, if there's any fragmentation, um, disassociation, um, you know, feeling disjointed, I'm just going to release that right down my grounding. I'm going to bring up some earth energy, some cosmic energy. I'm going to make sure my spirit is not disassociated from my body. I'm going to pull all my energy out of any of these social media platforms. And if there's any of their energy in me, I'm going to send it back to them. And so again, I know I'm oversimplifying it, but I promise you it is that simple. You know, it just doesn't take a rocket scientist to do these things. It just takes intention. This is what my intention is. So I could probably do a, a deeper dive into every one of those. I hope that you enjoyed it and found it enlightening and found it a little like, wow, I never really thought about social media that way or digital devices or how it impacts my human energy field. But this is what I love to do. I love to talk about how things impact us. And so, yeah, if you think about, we have on the rise, anxiety, panic, fear, you know, the list goes on. Well, if your energy is dissipated, could that possibly be contributing to that? Try it out. Add the meditation, start pulling your energy out of the digital world wide web. You can still look at it. Just be conscious of pulling your energy back and see if that helps with your, uh, mental health. Anyway, I know that's a lot of information, uh, but again, I just want to clarify, I'm not saying anything against digital devices. It's just know what you're, you're working with frequency. You're working with energy. You want to learn tools to heal it, bring it into balance and harmony and maintain your higher levels of consciousness. And you truly have the capacity to do that with anything in your life. But today it's about digital devices. So please write in the comment section. Um, if you've tried this before, if you were aware of this, if you weren't aware of this, are you going to try it? Go try it. Come back and tell me what your experience was. And I'll make sure and include a free meditation link in the little under box of this video. All right. And, uh, just to let you know, my level one class is going to be open in the next couple of weeks. So make sure that you put your name on my email list so that you can get notified when it opens up. If you'd like to learn a lot more about your intuition and your human energy field. All right. Take care everyone. Bye-bye.